A music producer known for his work writing hits for Beyonce, Justin Bieber, and many others is sued by a singer claiming he physically and sexually assaulted her. Time Grammy winning singer and producer The Dream has collaborated with the likes of Beyonce and Rihanna, but a new lawsuit filed in California yesterday details disturbing accusations involving someone who says they considered him a mentor. So it looks like The Dream has decided that if he's going down, his close friends and collaborators are going down with him. Of course, we're talking about none other than the Carters. The Dream finally responded to the sickening allegations made against him in a lawsuit filed by his protege, Shawnee Monroe. From his response, it's clear that The Dream has no intentions of backing down without a fight. He even called the lawsuit defamatory, claiming he and Shawnee had a consensual courtship. A consensual courtship? What does that even mean? But catch this, The Dream has a long and shady history with women, complete with allegations that make R. Kelly look like a saint. Allegedly, Bay and Jay-Z knew about this all along, but they folded their hands and did nothing like they did with Diddy. However, like Cat Williams said, this is the year all the creeps are catching hell, and it looks like the Carters aren't getting out of this one so easily. Well, at, at the time when I wrote that record, I was on a tour with Jay and Mary J. Blige at the time. And I believe Jay caught me in one of the cities and he was like, yo, I need you to go in with my girl. We went to rock the mic to, and, and, and there's everybody. So for those who missed it, the dream was slammed with an explosive lawsuit from his former protege, Shanna's Mangro, also known as Chani Monroe. The details of this lawsuit are so sickening, and the worst part is that it somehow implied that Jay-Z and Beyonce might have been in on it and helped protect the dream from investigation. Picture this, a young girl leaves her country for America, hoping to pursue her lifelong dream of becoming a music star. She gets in contact with a talented producer who has worked with some of her own idols and produce some of the biggest hits in the industry. The producer dangles success and connections in front of her, but she only has to do one thing, become his personal to use to fulfill all his childhood fantasies. As sickening as this sounds, this was Chani's experience with the dream, allegedly of course. It all started in 2014, when Chani arrived in the US from the Netherlands to pursue her music career. When the dream's team reached out to her, she was excited that she was finally on track to achieve her dreams. The dream has worked with artists like Justin Bieber, Mariah Carey, Beyonce, and Rihanna. He also has eight Grammy Awards, so this was the best possible news for an upcoming artist like Chani. But for some reason, when they finally met in person, the Dream didn't ask Chani to audition, sign a contract, or work in a studio. He told her to meet him in a club because he wanted to observe how she handled herself in a club atmosphere. He also told her she wasn't allowed to have a boyfriend while taking her on dates, making her record songs without crediting her, and still not giving her a contract. Dream promised to always take care of Chani, write the best songs for her, and get her connections with important people in the industry. But of course, he never gave her any of the things he promised her. Instead, he would flirt with her during studio sessions in front of everyone else. In one of those situations, Dream took her to a pitch black bedroom in the house where the studio was located. Chani wasn't really comfortable, so she told him, I don't know about this, and I don't want to ruin this. But he told her it was really important and that they did not have time to waste. He insisted that this will only make the records that much better. Then he proceeded to push her on the bed and do the do. He then locked her in the pitch black bedroom Allegedly, he returned after a while and got on top of her again, which he did repeatedly over the next few hours. He then demanded Chani tell him she loved him. In fact, he would only stop aggressively having ex with her once she said that she loved him. He also allegedly sent her explicit texts, made her dependent on him financially, and would do many unspeakable things to her. One time, he made he take a pregnancy test, and when it turned out negative, he called her and yelled at her for like an hour because she seemed happy that she wasn't pregnant for him. The whole lawsuit reads like something straight out of a horror movie. According to Chani, what Dream did to me made it impossible to live the life I envisioned for myself and pursue my goals as a singer and songwriter. Ultimately, my silence has become too painful and I realize that I need to tell my story to heal. I hope that doing so will also help others and prevent future horrific abuse. However, the Dream denied all the allegations Chani made against him in the lawsuit. In a motion to dismiss Chani's lawsuit, Dream's lawyers claimed that Chani's lawsuit was a legally insufficient hit piece, with 300 paragraphs of largely irrelevant, inaccurate, and intentionally out-of-context allegations. The complaint weaponizes destructive racial stereotypes against Diamant that he and others have faced. 
and tried to overcome their entire lives. The Dream even played the race, accusing Chani of using the judicial system to propagate a false and defamatory narrative about Diamant and making Diamant just another number in a flurry of ex-misconduct lawsuits against high-profile individuals in the entertainment industry, many of whom are black. According to The Dream, he and Chani were two adults who engaged in a brief and consensual courtship. There was never non-consensual ex between them, there was never ex exchanged for money or other commercial gain, and Diamant never abused the plaintiff in any way. However, it would turn out that The Dream has a long history of violent behavior with women and really, just a messy list of girlfriends and sugar mamas. And most of the women in his past don't exactly have great things to say about him. His first public relationship started in 2003 with R&B singer Nivea, and they dated for less than a year before running to the altar. Sadly, no label wanted to promote a married female R&B star because, you know, the idea of taxes and marital bliss just isn't that marketable. I'm in every parent teacher company. I'm in everything for four kids. For years. Lil Wayne and Dream can't show up. Where is the room to be a singer? Unless I say, look, y'all go with that nanny. Y'all go in that boarding school like I was told to do. But I I'm obsessed with them. I cannot breathe without them. You know what I'm saying? Like, they're everything to me. This meant Nivea's career had to take a back seat while she focused on being married. She had their first child, a daughter in 2005, then twins in 2006. However, the marriage had fallen apart by 2007, and Nivea called the separation a mutual decision. In a statement to thegrapejuints.net, she said, His happiness is all I want, for I could never repay him for what he has endured by being my friend, partner, and husband. The real question is why did she feel he was enduring being married to her? But I guess we'll never know, because shortly after this announcement, rumors started circulating that the Dream was spending a suspicious amount of time with Canadian model Chris Jacobs, who had previously appeared in his falsetto music video. It later came out that the Dream was the one who got tired of Nivea because he felt she was no longer cool. In an interview with Angela Yee, Dream said that as his career grew, he became bitter that Nivea's career wasn't growing enough to match his status. He decided to end things when they couldn't have fun together as a couple anymore. That's wild, considering her career went off the rails in the first place because she married him and started popping out his kids. I don't know what particular time, it was, just, it was more so of a feeling of, um, of and, and they and she would say this also of me, like when, you, when you're no longer able to have a certain type of fun with your partner mm -hmm. and it turns into a, a, a relationship where you're kind of like trying to get them to you know get a certain thing or, or understand something because they could have been through something in their life that they didn't get that particular thing you know um and i have to thank my grandfather for a certain type of upbringing that i have you know in order to be who it who it is that i am right now today so they may not get there like that i'm trying to use all the right things without saying wanna, anything wrong <laughs> yeah, i don't want to piss nobody off so i think the common theme is that you, you taking things on such a level with your own drive, your personal drive, and a lot of people aren't matching that. So you eventually have right. to cut it them off. It kind of makes you bitter. Yeah, it kind of you start to get bitter, you know, and you don't want to be that. And that's what happened in my in my relationship when I was married. I just and when I ended it, that was why I decided to end it because I didn't want to I didn't want to take this good person and treat them a certain way based off of what I was changing into, mm -hmm. based off of being bitter and starting to just look at them like. Yeah, because she recently she purpose. recently did an interview where she, I'm sure you saw it. According to Dream, they were once madly in love, and he didn't regret how things turned out. He blamed the divorce on his upbringing, claiming that growing up without his parents made him rush into getting married, anything but take accountability for his actions. At that particular time, there was a lot going on, um, and I was definitely in love with, with this particular person that's that you're me, talking that's about. That's Dream right there. Sorry. Yeah, that's me. I'm pushing all my buttons on them because Angie's pushing my buttons. Hey, now. Good um, timing on the bell. Um, Thank you. But no, I mean, I was in love at a particular time. It's, you know what it is? It's when you grow up without being in that type of um, environment as far as a family, we're not taught that how much more than love does it take to run a relationship. Mm -hmm. Like, cause love isn't just where it's gonna end. It can't just start and stop with love. Like, mm -hmm. it has to be something else. There has to be a certain amount of knowledge and patience that that's a, that's acquired in order to keep it going and to keep it straight. And I found out the hard way. So, 
I figured that if I had probably parents around, like I would have been able to kind of like see certain things and, and kind of like it not expose them, but kind of kind of just make sure that it was what it was instead of jumping in. You would think Dream would take time off relationships to focus on dealing with his issues. But no. By 2009, just a year after his divorce from Nevea was finalized, Dream was finalized, and he was already madly in love with singer Christina Milian. They met when he was looking for someone to sing and appear in the music video for the Rockin' That remix. According to Dream, he decided to go with her because she was the underdog. Is that what they called wanting to get into someone's pants back then? Because they rolled right out of the studio into bed and within a few months, she was rocking a huge engagement ring. By September, Dream and Christina were the latest couple in town, and one month later, she announced that she was 19 weeks pregnant. Christina gave birth to their daughter Violet Nash in February 2010, making Dream a father of four. Five months after Violet was born, Dream was spotted wrapped up in another woman without his wedding ring. The woman was later identified as his assistant, Melissa Santiago. Because of how bad this looked, Dream released a statement saying the marriage had actually ended in late 2009, just months after they got married. However, TMZ spilled the tea on how Dream filed for divorce in February 2010, just nine days before Christina gave birth to his daughter. Still his damage control campaign, Dream published a letter to his fans on his official website saying he didn't end the marriage because of an affair. It's easy to say that it's because of another woman or a new relationship, but truthfully, it's not. I would love to tell the truth as to why my relationship wasn't successful, but today that is between me and Christina. I've cried about this for months, after interviews, after prayer and I've tried to I've myself at a point because of the failure that was looming. But they weren't even married for up to a year, and this wasn't his first divorce. So, it just didn't make sense that he was being so dramatic over it. He moved on pretty quickly too. The divorce was finalized in October 2011, and by 2012, he was exposed for cheating on a woman he had been dating secretly. The woman he was cheating with was Lydia Nam, and they quickly got engaged in 2012. That same year, Lydia gave birth to Dream's fifth child, and that same year, Christina exposed Dream for being a deadbeat daddy. Nivea supported Christina's allegations, spilling the tea about how, since she had a fourth child with Lil Wayne, she had to do everything by herself because her baby daddies were not showing up. This ultimately made her career take a back seat while Lil Wayne and Dream won awards and lived the superstar life. However, it quickly became obvious that being a deadbeat serial cheater and baby daddy wasn't the worst thing about the dream. In 2013, he got locked up in California for putting his hands on Lydia. Although she initially refused to press charges, she later went back to report an incident that occurred in April 2013, where Dream allegedly attacked her. She claimed he got physical with her, almost chopping her out, but she didn't immediately report it because, according to her, she was afraid. After a six-month investigation, Dream got locked up pending his trial, but he put out a statement calling Lydia a liar and saying she made everything up just to extend her visa in the US. Imagine everyone's shock when Dream showed up to the trial with a new woman on his arm. The new woman was Lalon Martinez, and Dream told Madame Noir that he met her at a friend's office, and they hit it off. They were engaged by May 2014 and secretly got married in July 2014. When he cleared the charges against him from his ex, Lydia, he settled into marital bliss with Lalon, and they went on to have four children. He said in an interview that his marriage with Lalon was perfect because there was no drama. He could forget to call her for a long time, and she won't be bothered at all. On their fifth wedding anniversary in July 2019, Lalon shared a photo of them along with the caption, We've hit five years. We've broken away from the traditional notions of marriage and made it our own, made it to fit us and our lifestyle. It definitely seems like the dream is not practicing traditional marriage because how would he have time to pursue a so-called consensual courtship with Chani if he was? Now, one of the creepiest parts of the lawsuit Chani filed against the dream is that it was obvious that the only reason why he could do everything he allegedly did to her was that he had some powerful people protecting him. And two of those people are Beyonce and Jay-Z. See, the Dream and Beyonce have worked together for years. He is known as Bay's go-to producer and songwriter, so you know they spend a lot of time together. He wrote some of her hit songs like Single Ladies, Run the World, and Partition. 
and he has been listed in the credits on every Beyonce album since 2008, including Cowboy Carter. According to court documents, the dream would regale Chani with stories of how he helped create Beyonce and Rihanna and promised to do the same for her as long as she did everything he told her. He said that to write songs for her, he needed to know everything about her, including everything that embarrassed her, upset her, angered her, and excited her. This would make them the next Bay and Jay. He also used the fact that Chani admired and looked up to Beyonce to manipulate her. According to the documents, he would tell Chani that the reason why he was able to create such hit songs with Bay was that they created a sanctuary together, which allowed him to know Beyonce in a way that others could not. This sanctuary was even stronger than a spousal connection because it was about art. He said that his relationship was so close that he knew about Beyonce's pregnancy before her husband, Jay-Z. And to convince her, these are some texts he allegedly sent her. I will need to know things you think or embarrassed about to the furthest extent. I'm going to be your better half if this goes where I think it's going. But when she asked what he meant by sanctuary, he told her, I let you know after we win 10 Grammys together. Right now, you just have to be free and let me undress you emotionally so I can know what's underneath your heart. The Dream even called Beyonce his family when he promised Chani that he would get her to open for Beyonce during her tour. I think the more freedom you give me, the more relationships I will be able to put you through and in. I am a straightforward person. Things like the Beyonce opening isn't a big deal to get it done. That's my family. Now get this, the court documents also implied that the Dream and Jay-Z were business partners and that Jay used his influence to protect Dream's shady record label. It said the Dream's depraved behavior was facilitated by his record label, Contra Paris LLC, as well as by Epic Records, the label Dream convinced to invest in Ms. Mangro, that's Chani, despite the fact that he never intended to truly support her career trajectory, but instead wanted corporate funding to assist in his venture. Guess who the co-founder of Contra Paris LLC is? Jay-Z Dream describes Contra Paris as a designer and culture label, or an art label, but it's unclear if they ever signed any artists or released any records. Today, the Contra Paris website appears partially defunct and seems to function as a consignment shop for a handful of items of clothing that presumably belong to Dream. The only reason why the Dream and Jay-Z would co-found a record label that doesn't do anything related to music is that they need it for other reasons, you know, like money laundering, king, and so on. It's clear that whatever the Dream has going on, Jay and Beyonce are deeply involved. Word on the street is that Dream has promised that if he goes down, they're going down with him. He released a statement that said, These claims are untrue and defamatory. I oppose all forms of and have always strived for help people realize their career goals. As someone committed to making a positive impact on my fellow artists and the world at large, I am deeply offended and saddened by these accusations. However, it looks like this case is heading for trial, and if Chani can prove even a quarter of the claims she made in the lawsuit, then Dream can kiss his sanctuary career goodbye. As usual, Jay and Beyonce have not said anything about all the drama unfolding, but fans are having a field day with it. One person said, Diddy connected to Beyonce and Jay-Z, accused of S.A. The Dream connected to Beyonce, accused of S.A.R. Kelly conviction. At what point are we going to realize that somewhere, these two are complicit, if not culpable? Another person said, I definitely understand what Kendrick was saying when he said the industry is cooked. Some of the biggest stars have so many terrifying allegations against them. But do you think Beyonce and Jay-Z helped the Dream cover up his antics? Or are they just innocent parties caught up in this mess? Comment down below and then check out this next video.